All right, so here we are at Stone's Echo, which you'll notice is south of Plain Song, which sits up here. And we really haven't gotten close to Plain Song, though we have seen it from that tall neck that we did a few episodes ago. And Aloy is in Stone's Echo medically recovering from what happened to her when she went into Laetopolis. And that was the path we took to follow Silence along this course and into that old ones facility where all manner of things happened we discovered that there is a technologically advanced group of humans out there who possesses what looks to be another clone of elizabeth sobeck but aloy escaped with a copy of gaia and then was roughed up as she was basically thrown down river varl found her brought him to Stone's Echo where we met Zoe, who is a grave singer of the Utaru clan, and Aloy was able to help fix one of their land gods, and then said, and had a conversation with Zoe, found out that there's trouble to the mountains in the to the west of Plain Song, so in this area, and Zoe agreed to go speak to the chorus, which is the leadership of the Utaru to get a to get permission for Aloy to enter their sacred cave. Now what that sacred cave is is a repair bay. It's a it's a repair bay of Hephaestus. And so Aloy recovering here in Stone's Echo is going to kind of magically go boop and I'm ready to go now. And then the choice will be all ours. Do we want to go directly to play and song and continue to push the main quest? There is one side quest here that I'm gonna pick up. I'm gonna see what it is and I'm going to allow that to determine if we go to plain song or if we go on that side quest because we do not have any side quests or errands right now i'm not doing some of the collectible stuff with salvage contracts and melee pits and things like that we'll run into camps as we run into them so it will be one of those two things so we're going to figure out what that is and go from there if i can get it i can reboot gaia indeed and then maybe we can figure out who those strangers in the proving lab were but first, I might want to explore a little. See what I can find in this area. My word will help you on your hunt. I'm pretty sure they're going to be literally the same thing that everyone else has at this point. Um, let's figure out what you want. Oh. So, Ray, what do you want? We're gonna do this. Is there some sort of problem? The problem is foreigners. You're the second one I've seen today. Sooner you all go, the better this soil will be. Less chance of bad seeds taking root. I would have thought easing the land god's pain would have earned some goodwill around here, but... Ray is going to die anyway, just like all of us. Meanwhile, outlanders come, taking what little we have left. Just like that Karja Huntress I saw earlier. All dressed up like a bird, dragging an Antaru girl behind her like a slave. Called the girl a thrush. Never heard that before. Must be some old Karja curse. Wait. A Karja Huntress with an Utaru Thrush. What, am I talking to myself here? Yes. Saw them just today running southwest, likely to their deaths. Can't harvest the stinger fruit there. Too many machines. Poor Utaru girl, whoever she is. May her seeds find fertile soil. I know you didn't mean to, but you may have just helped me find an old friend. Thanks. Don't need your thanks. Don't want it. Well, she was super nice. Sounds like someone I know. Southwest. A, a Karja Huntress indeed, and that takes us into land we have discovered. So we're going to head that way. And the Karja Huntress in question is Talana Khan Padish, who is the Sunhawk of the Hunter's Lodge all the way back in Meridian. So what's she doing here is a good question. Um, and let's see what that message is. Fair enough. So, Talana Khan Padish and Aloy have a history from Zero Dawn, where Aloy came to Meridian, and found the Hunter's Lodge, which was this patriarchal, pure-blood organization under all of the prior Sun Kings, including Jaron. Avad opens it up. And you can actually read it in his bylaws entries to say, you know, you must accept women, you must accept non-Karja. And there's a structure within the 
Hunter's Lodge where you have, there's only eight of them and they are hawks who must have sponsor a thrush. We form kind of these hunting pairs. Everyone else that's a member of the lodge uh, is just a fledgling. And across the course of the narrative, um, Talana replaces the Sunhawk by hunting down probably the most single difficult machine in the game called Red Maw, which is a Thunderjaw with Aloy. If Aloy does most of the work, Talana takes the credit, in my opinion. But they're friends, they form a bond. And now Aloy has just found out that Talana, for some reason, Akarja, is pr pretty far west, actually. I mean, we're talking, this is where No Man Land's end, with land ends with this mountain range. So what's Talana doing here? And it's a, it's a decent side quest. We'll probably do it in steps as we encounter and get deeper into the areas that this quest steps into like we're not just going to follow it all the way west because that would take us in a wrong direction narratively but we are going to go ahead and start there Let's start there i wonder what she's doing all the way out here mm, indeed um is there a stash box here are you buying or selling today we're not really doing either one there is a stash box here okay so let's make our ammo and make sure we're all ammoed up here. By the way, making ammo at the bench is more material efficient than it is if you make it in your pocket. And we actually still are in good shape. We really didn't need too many arrows from the last time we went. So we'll just pull from the stash and we'll go from there. Make sure we've got enough material in pocket. <coughs> Excuse me. And all we really needed was ridge wood. Okay. Goodbye, Stones Echo. We will be back. This is a little bit of a hub, and I do remember seeing someone do, on a recent playthrough of uh, Forbidden West attempt to enter Stones Echo before they had completed Leotopolis, and these guys were not nice. But Rishi, um, saw your lurk in there. Have a good day at work, my friend. Dustin, good morning, sir. Rocket Perm, thanks for hanging out and chatting. As we go see what's going on with Talana. Not a short walk. I was happy to read your update yesterday, Dustin, that the uh, the crawl space issues are just related to water table and not a sewage problem. That's good news. It's still something to deal with, but it's it's a better something to deal with. So I'm very happy for you, my friend. Yes, exactly. It'll be so much less. Okay, so we have got what looks to be a scrounger over there. A burrower, okay. Even though he looked like he was digging. That does okay, that's a scrapper. That scrapper. That guy's my problem. I just want to get past him without alerting everybody. So I think we just move down and try to take him out. Not Scrapper Valley! <laughs> That's a miss. That was not. Oh, his buddy's jumping over here now. But I think we're all right. To this day, Perm, as we sail in uh, Sea of Thieves and we hit Plunder Valley, it's just, that is still said, and it's still said in your voice. Not Plunder Valley! Every time. There's another machine over there that kind of came a little bit further than I thought he was going to. That's a scrapper. All right, let's keep walking. The one thing that was interesting about the conversation from the not so nice Utaru back there was that it seems that Talana has taken an Utaru thrush on, so like a hunting apprentice. Where I mean, I thought that was Aloy's position. She'd been fired as a thrush. Okay, something's looking around for us. Don't know what it is. Yeah, we're not going to go digging those up yet. 
can't be those chargers, right? No, none of those are lit up yellow. So what? No, so it's gone now. Don't know what it was. So as for the recordings from yesterday's session, um, they were split up into their close to as hour intervals as was reasonable for narrative purposes. Uh, and they will drop today, well yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So these episodes will not drop until Monday, will be Monday the 16th and so on as we go. And the idea is to, you know, no one's going to sit down, well maybe some people wish to sit down and watch them all in order but the idea is to make it so that's more episodic people that w are trying to keep up with this as we play through this live uh don't get too far behind by me dropping 10 episodes a day or anything like that so it will be a trickle hello glintock no that's a long leg isn't it leap lasher why well, do i keep getting those two confused at a distance glance well, let's go ahead and take care of this problem for them, really. Or not. You see that, Milo? You have to wait for an opening. Well, we missed that one. Oh, there's more than one now. Oh, you put us right in the middle of Leap Lashers. I don't like you, Talana. That not kill you. Come over here. In a minute, we have to get parts from things first with your blast trap sitting down here. But you're gonna, you know, hey, you weren't using this right. But first, looting. Because we'll forget otherwise. in your box here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> hey, Talana. Sunhawk Talana came Padish. Aloy despite the Nora. You're the slayer of Redmaw, the savior of Meridian. Milu is my new thrush. She joined the Hunter's Lodge shortly after the Battle of the Spire. She's heard a few stories about our hunts together. Stay and rest. Make sure you take some medicinal plants for that wound. So what brings you all the way out here? Are the machines back east too tame for you? Not quite. I'm looking for someone. A Karja hunter, about my age. Named Amadis. He came out here on his own a while back and... Now he's missing. Who's Amadis? This man you're looking for. Is he another hunter from the lodge? <sighs> He'd hate to hear you say that. It's a long story, but he's a former noble. We met out in the wilds after I was wounded on a hunt. He healed me, then helped put a stop to machines that were threatening a nearby village. After that, we uh, parted ways. Sounds like there's more to the story. Ah, uh, another time. Really think it's wise to have a, what is effectively a pretty peaceful group of people in the Utari. You feel it's pretty wise to have a thrush from them? So, Milu's your new thrush. 
Guess that means a hawk can sponsor more than one now? Things have changed at the Hunter's Lodge. Now all who seek to become the best hunters are welcomed as members, no matter their tribe. But don't worry, you're still my favorite thrush. You're really shaking things up. As I promised when I became Sunhawk. And as for Milu, she believes learning to hunt will help her ailing tribe. Who am I to say no to that? You could say no from the basis of Milu doesn't look like she has the skill set to be a hunter. Yeah, being the favorite doesn't feel like it's worth much. I agree, Rocket. I, this, I feel like they could have handled this narrative without Milu. I feel, I feel the presence of Milu does dilute the relationship between Aloy and Talana, but it is what it is. The last time we met, you had left Meridian on a contract to hunt a deadly new machine. Several Clost Riders, it turned out. A hunter-killer, too. You said you were feeling restless. Is life as Sunhawk that boring? Well, I had just left the city. I couldn't stand being cooped up with bureaucratic regulations and formalities. But my time out in the wilds helped me realize... Remember to clonk that follow button. needs to be more than a glorified trophy hall. Our hunters should be the spears that safeguard our civilians, like my father and brother were. Sounds like a big challenge. I don't remember others in the lodge being so open-minded. Some are. The rest will get a boot out the door. And I'll get back to it as soon as I find Amadis. So her father and brother were also hawks of the lodge who basically said no to the tyranny of the 13th mad son King Jaron. And for that, they were tossed into the Sun Ring, where they, prot they fought really valiantly. Um, one of the reasons Talana wanted to become Sunhawk was because the current Sunhawk she replaced was trying to cover up the actions of the prior Hawks who had opposed Jaron, because that Sunhawk, who was a real piece of work, was a xenophobe and a sexist, and kind of still supported the, the idea of what Jaron was doing, even though Jaron was gone. So Talana wanted to honor the memory of her father and brother, and that was their big driving force in becoming Sunhawk. Now she's finding out that being the head honcho comes with paperwork and bureaucracy, kind of like my life in the last year, and she doesn't dig it as much. Um, so she, you know, just left kind of the same way Aloy did, just doesn't want to be a part of the bigger, the bigger machine back in Meridian. I can help you find your friend. I know you must have your own reasons for being out this way. But I'd be glad to have your help. What was he doing out here? He lost someone close to him during the Red Raids. He was heading to the side of the battle to finally lay them to rest. Milu and I were on our way there now. The battlefield's near. I can still come with you. No. Go to Stone's Echo, heal, wait for me there, and think on today's lesson. But... You're no good distracted by pain. Go. All hunters need to recover from time to time. Yes, Sunhawk. It's been an honor. Thanks, Perm. Have a good one. We'll see you when you get back, hopefully. Will she be okay on her own? Of course. She's been watching. <coughs> Come. The battle feels this way. Alright, Talana. Let's go find Amadis. It is rather ballsy for... So this battlefield, you said it was part of the Red Raids? The Battle of Burning Blooms. Amadis was part of the Karja army that pushed into the west. His division attacked the Tanakh, but they underestimated the enemy's forces. It was a massacre. I never thought you'd be friends with someone who participated in the Red Raids. Oh, don't worry. He was one of the good ones. He tried to stop the attack, but it was too late. He's been on the run ever since. So Amadis is an on-the-run Karja refugee who tried to stop the Red Raids. Think something went wrong for him out here? While they were out here during Jaron's run as king. Don't worry, I'll track him down. But I, what I was going he to say. He would get a message back to me. When they're done talking. Waited, but it never came. What I was going to say is that it's pretty ballsy for Talana to be dressed not only as a Karja, but as ostentatiously as a Karja as she is. It's without a doubt noticeable at a distance that she's Karja, and the Tanakh, despite this being no man's land, she does not have a rite of passage. 
They're well within their rights to, to bring her down. This is supposed to be a neutral zone. This is the field where the Tanakh slaughtered the Karja. Looks like time and weather have eroded most signs of battle. But there are a lot of footprints. Must be recent. Let's take a look. Oh, we have to do it without the focus. Okay. Heavy footprints. Maybe Osirum. It's too many to tell if Amadis is with them. I better look around. My focus might show me more. That's what we were doing Amadis in the first place. Amadis was supposed to be alone. Why were Osirum here? Because they're Delvers. <clears throat> There's a big lake and a big wreck right there. Weapon. The blades rusted. Must have been from the battle years ago. So this battle was between the Tanakh and the Karja during the Red Raids. Cooking fire. Looks recent. Whoever was here camped out for at least a night. Maybe Karja. Looks like there's a trail I can follow with my focus. So I believe she's making that judgment based on the fact that the Osirum like to wear heavy armor. Amana, I think I got something. And the Karja tend Tracks to go for lighter. From the battlefield. Lead the way. As if you can't tell that by looking at Talana and her armor, which does not at all protect her midsection. The Karja tribe has often been more about flash than substance in a lot of things. They're a little bit more debutante-like than they are practical. Now, I would argue the Osram go to the other extreme. I don't get it. Why would Amadis keep going west? Maybe there's something else around here? Looks pretty abandoned to me. The Osram are about booms and how big the lift kit on your monster truck can be at times. There's another fire here. Alright, there's somebody sitting up here. What's he doing out here? Maybe he saw Amadis. Let's Our ask him. Families. Let me guess. Your straggler got left behind when the wagons rolled out. Mm, no, nope, that's not really what happened here, Lel. Do not worry. I am not the Karja hitting kind. Just an old scavenger grateful for a little company. Name's Lel. You two must be lost. Actually, we're looking for someone. A Karja hunter. He would have been traveling alone. Clothes would have been well worn. Yes, he was here. Poking around the old battlefield. Wanted to know what happened. Lucky for him. Old Lel hears all the stories. Karja army charged straight into the waiting Tanakh. Most burned, but others, the Tanakh marched back west. Your man wanted to know where. Told him I've heard rumors of a place called the Rot. What is it? A Tanakh prison or a Karja graveyard depending on how you look at it. Where is this place? Further west, in Tanakh territory, but that did not stop him. An Asaram caravan was camping out at the battlefield, about to head the same way. He joined them. They all went west, towards the ridge. Thanks, Lel. We have to get going. 
Good hunting out there. Let's head west to the ridge then. If we find this caravan, maybe we'll find a <clears throat> So the rot. The rot. The rumors of the rot, which Lel just told us about, will not manifest in this game for a, quite a while. It is very, very far out west. Like, near the coast. So, that's why this plot line with Talana is multi-stepped, because the current place we are in the game, we shouldn't be venturing past the mountain range until we actually address what's happening with the Utaro and their land god, but we are going to try to track down these Osram and help get Talana some answers. You mentioned Amadis lost someone close to him at the battle. Do you think the Tanakhs took them prisoner instead? To the rot? I don't know. Maybe. The ridge up ahead. It looks like there's a tunnel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Smell that? That's a trap. I'm pretty sure my memory serves here, but this feels this feels like bad news. But yeah, yeah, there it is. <clears throat> hasn't seen us yet. We can use that. Hawk and thrush, just like old times. Give me some cover. Weak to acid and fire. Sparker. Yeah, the Shell Snapper, Snapper Energy Shield is a pain. See if we can do some pretty significant damage to this thing on the first shot here. I would very much like to because these things are a pain. Thank you very much, Barrys, for being right in my way. Nope. First shot did not do a lot of damage. Now he's looking for us. That one did. Whoa. Hope it's not gonna miss that. And now she's under going underground. Yep. Here she comes. Still didn't know where we are, but she's about to. Morning, Yake the Jake. Name I'm still getting used to. Formerly known as the Omega Jake. Where'd she go? And thank you for the resub. Ow. Ooh. But you're really hurt. There it is. Gotta say, feels good to hunt by your side again. I mean, if by hunting you mean Let's you tossed to me top. ammo. Thanks for the resub, sir. Appreciate it. How you doing this morning, Jake? Feels weird because I know Jake's your real name, and I have not called you by that because of the whole. Let's preserve the anonymity of people in gaming communities online thing, which is kind of like etiquette so that to, to start calling you Jake is just weird to me it will just I will adjust because I remember when it wasn't you Omega either hopefully you're having a, a fine morning I understand it's cold up your way this morning the extra stock for later all right there is a what is this? This note was left by an Osram. It's um it's chilly here. It's in the twenties. Uh we had some snow last night. Like but I, I like that, so. It's a damn a shame. Day. Scroll. A Delver's diary, written with a friendly hand. Scanned glyphs. Oh, this dam brings back some fond memories. I followed rumors of a of a gargantuan levy to this site, hoping to avail myself of yet another delightful delve. 
or perhaps I hoped for an adventure as rousing as my visit to the frozen north. But now that I'm here, I find myself at a bit of a loss. Even with the eye of a well-versed adventurer, I cannot spot a way to reach the interior unscathed, or return with a loaded rucksack for that matter. And truth be told, by the decrepit looks of it, I can scarcely imagine the effort outweighing the results. Wait. Have my reckless impulses been tempered by that good sense by the good sense of a certain flamed haired Nora? I think they have. All for the best, I suppose. As much as I would relish another damn busting delve, I doubt she would miraculously reappear to save me again, and even if she did, I wouldn't want her to risk her neck on my account. Not after all she did for me before. No, sir. I shall take a few moments to reminisce, and then southward it is to the burning shores which is the name of the DLC that's coming out in April 2023. I was wondering... It's a dead end. Looks like a cave-in. So what happened to the caravan? Let's look around. Maybe your second sight can help? Talana, I think I found something. In the rubble. What is it? Nosrum. What does it say? It was part of the caravan that went through here. I know it ends abruptly when the tunnel started to collapse, I guess. Oh. But there's nothing here about a Karja hunter. And an earlier caravan made it through before the collapse. Sounds like they went to a watering hole on the other side. So he could have made it. Is there another way through? <sighs> I don't know. These mountains are pretty steep. Then I'll have to find a way. Thank you, Aloy, for coming with me this far. But I've taken up enough of your time. Here, take this. May it help you on your own hunt. Hold on. How do I get in contact with you if I find a way across the mountains? I'll check in with Milo at Stone's Echo whenever I can. If you find a way, leave word with her. I will. Good luck. You too. Callie, welcome in. So, Gildan, as Callie mentions, seems really <clears throat> about her friend. is he was a, a minor guy. I don't think there's a way past you met him in right the Frozen Wilds, and he. Was I, I, I'd like to leave it, I think, a little bit. Just I think that's what we need to know right now. Gildan is an Ostrom Delver who who Aloy met during the Frozen Wilds expansion of Horizon Zero Dawn. We just found evidence based on the first scroll we found that it's probably Gildan and he's gone to the Burning Shores, which will be the DLC. I really do hope he's there. Um, there was, if you remember, he was the guy from from Frozen Wilds who was kind of in the flooded he was delving into like a flooded area within the Frozen Wilds and he was astonished by Aloy's ability to unlock this area to allow him to get to what he was looking for but it um I think it would be better as we progress through this so that we let them catch up and then give Golden's story down the road whenever we kind of get into the burning shores at the point that it comes out because if we're to the point in the story where i want to be by april as we kind of do our slow walk i i do want to incorporate that dlc into the overall episodic arc of what's going on here so but gildan gildan was a funny guy he was a he was a, a an interesting character but talana has said thanks and left us here we're not done with this cave from a narrative perspective but we are done with it for now this door needs some kind of code to open. It doesn't look like there's anything I can do now. Mm -mm. So welcome in, Callie. Hopefully you're having a good Saturday. Bunch of Osram supplies. And a dead end. Get this from my stash when I need it. So I don't think that leaves us with much option. I think we have to go to Plain Song now, as we've uh, we've gotten the arc with Talana done. 
So we will start our walk that way. And I believe that's the quest that was auto-selected for us. The side quest here is on hold. That's the need-to-know quest with Talana. So we will, yes, head toward the Dying Lands. The area around Plain Song that is blight-stricken and unable to feed its people enough anymore. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, everyone, here on the live side this morning. And those of you watching the episodic run of this on YouTube, I appreciate you coming along and having a watch. And don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, you can uh, always look below the video. There's a link to the Twitch channel where these recordings are done, as well as links to very many other things. Callie, thank you for the follow. Hammers up! <laughs> Hello, Glenhawks. This is a pretty long walk. 1,650 meters. And as we always do, we're not running. Kind of take in the surroundings, make sure we don't miss anything. Collect things along the way to keep our, our stash filled and talk through the lore. I, I always appreciate how... Okay, you guys are getting a little close there. You have to love how these were not here for the purposes of the storytelling arc, and now they are. Sounds pretty close behind me, too. It's a long leg back there. There's a lot of machines here. Let's get off the ground. Oh, hey, Greenshine. I'll definitely pick you up. This Greenshine might trade for something good. Yeah, it'll trade for... Well, at least that thing in the, in the uh, trunk of that car will trade for something good. Down the road, this will be where Dreadwing spawns. But right now, it's where Glinthawks are, and that guy saw me. Because this fire is very recognizable. This is the fire that you run down that hill, turn right, and there's Dreadwing usually over there. But right now, it's Wide Maws and Glinthawks down there. He's still looking for us. They did not hear that by a miracle. Nothing else was alerted to that. He didn't finish it. So we'll get our parts and move on here. Oh, that was a sky drifter, actually. Not, not a glint talk. But that was a razor tail. All right, let's keep moving. I don't want to get into too much combat without without need for it. Obviously, parts will certainly take for the purposes of selling things, but combat carries cost, the cost of arrows, and oftentimes the lower level machines, eh, it's not cost effective at times because of the the how expensive some of the ammunition types can be. That burrower needs to go. Yeah, and I missed that shot. I still didn't kill it. That did. Not so worried about those chargers. <clears throat> those long legs up there are not what I want to deal with, though. Let's take our time. Another Pharaoh Scarab here. We may not have much of a choice here, so we might do ourselves a, a solid and take these guys out from distance if possible. We have to get in scan range, though. Perfect. Explosion actually hurt the other one. What a shot. 
Gotta love a Reeves. A Reeves is a great sharp shot bow. Something else rummaging around down there. I can hear it. Yeah, we messed him up. Where's your buddy? There he is. Well, we've covered about 400 meters on our walk to Plain Song. The Utaru tribe are interesting. They're vegan for starters. Uh, they do not eat, do not eat meat. They live off of the plants that are normally sown by their their land gods. The, the fields are basically tilled by them, but they're very much very much a a plant so, plant based society. They are very much in tune with nature, at least they think they are, and. They can be rather xenophobic. If you remember when we were back at Baron Light and at Meridian, and there were talks of overtures that were made not only to the Tanakh, but to the Utaru. The Tanakh at least replied. The Utaru never did. And part of it is because they just want to be left alone. They want their commune of and way of life to be left alone. And so they can be a little xenophobic. Um, so Zoe, being the one to help Aloy, obviously it was because Zoe and Varl had, you know, spent some time together. So Zoe would be atypical as far as Utaru reaction would go to Aloy. And you should expect that as we get there, that the Utaru in general will not be, oh, welcome Outlander. They're not going to be happy in general to see Aloy. They're not going to be militantly antagonistic as say the Tanakh may be but they just want to be left alone the problem is that xenophobia is also not helping them fix their problems remember to clonk that follow button <clears throat> so we've covered about half the distance from where we were to where we're going here We continue to walk the path. There's another, looks like a leap lasher out there. He was hopping. I think that's what he is. Yep. And there's a char that's a goat. Never mind. We can probably get him out of the way here. That is not where I aimed. So, in one video, that and I watch a lot of Horizon lore videos and tactics videos just because I'm interested. I had one person say that stealth was not a viable way to play the game. And I don't agree. Again, not where I aimed. Okay, now we're just going to upset and fight them all. Yeah, that's what I th I'm saying, Rocket. It's. I mean, there are times where this, you know, something like this goes sideways. I didn't plan this out well enough, and now it's not, you know, it's not viable. But to say that it can never work, I can definitely take a thunder, a thunder jaw out before he sees me. I don't have that on what I want. There it is. I missed that shot. A charger gonna be mad now. Okay, there's something else out there still, and I don't know where it is. There it is. Well, they shouldn't have gotten curious, should they? 
chargers were like, what's that noise? Came up the hill and now some scrappers are going to have to come along and pick up their pieces. One thing about the way Forbidden West works is I would always encourage you to heal and craft ammo before you loot. Because if your pockets are full, it will go to stash. But if you spend what is in your pockets to replenish your, your ammo or healing supplies, always good to have extra. and then loot, you're going into your pockets first, and then into your stash second. We'll take the machine muscle for sure. We will burn through that. We have we have over a thousand of it, but we will burn through it. Uh, that will make us how many? Five? Yeah. Go ahead and craft that now. This is the way. This is the way. That's a whole pack of animals, and what are you? A scrap pile. Not that interested. And I understand how the stealth is not a viable mechanic. It can be said more reliably from the perspective of someone who plays the game on hard, you know, ultra hard, whatever the mega hard setting is. Which I don't. I don't enjoy the machines being bullet sponges. I enjoy the settings I have because when I make a bad shot, you can see very little health comes off. Shine. I'm not sure what it means. But when I make a good shot, it really hurts them. Alright, that right there was an example of what is still unfixed on the PS5. That pop-in, because I'm playing on I Want Max Frames. Oh, hello. I just get combat music. That pop-in is an example of something they still haven't worked out. And I really hope they continue to work on patching the pop-in. Okay, who is shooting at me? Is that the... Oh, man, are you serious? Something is definitely shooting at me. Yeah. Now I have the icon. And if you properly use things, like I just used that knockdown shot to put him on the ground so we could kill that Sky Drifter with a critical strike. So if you're not just in shoot a bow, shoot a bow, shoot a bow mode, and you think ta a little bit more tactically about how you want to fight, uh, you can certainly you can certainly play the game in many, many ways. Fair enough. What you hope when you replay the game, you won't have to fight the sky drifters when they go underground so here's the people we just saved from that sky drifter these are these are utaru obviously we're very near their land now or entering their land so dane talk to us good sir everyone all right you saved our lives more importantly you saved the harvest we carry the utaru are in your deck aloy i am dying you're saying that's a whole harvest the red light you see around you has withered most of our crops. What little we carry, we had to collect at the edge of the plains. Where are you all headed? Plainsong. It lies just down this road. I'm afraid you won't see many outlanders like yourself there. Uh, my people like to keep to themselves. But if you're lacking weapons or supplies, I know some of them will be willing to trade with you. Here, it's not much, but it's the least I can do to thank you. I can't take this. Please, any kindness we see, we also sow. Thank you. Dine, you should go. Tell the others we have the harvest, and that we need a healer. Right. May the land bloom in your steps. I should go too. 
If you do make it to Plain Song, we share our meals up on the northern dish. Diane's one of the cooks there. I'm sure he can make you some rations worth trading for. I'll try to make my way there if I can. She looked really happy to talk to us about that, too. So there were two different pronunciations of Dine or Dine's name there. Which tells me the two voice actors weren't in the same room whenever they were doing the recordings. Let's go ahead and hit the camp here and save. I'm not much on the cooked meals in Horizon because they cost what I believe is too much shards. Some of the meals go 75 shards plus materials and it's like, shouldn't the cook be providing the materials? Or if I provide the materials, shouldn't the cook be asking for less from me? It, the bonuses were nice, but they weren't worth the cost. So what you see here is the red blight. The collapsing of the biosphere manifested here is killing these crops. And is the reason that the Utaro are in so much trouble because these are the planes of Plainsong. And those right there, you'll notice that that is a friendly machine. Land God Plowhorn won't attack us because it's still sowing their fields. But as Zoe told us, it's just mulching their fields right now, which is effectively making them unfertile. But here's the approach to Plainsong, at least one side of it. Built on old satcom dishes. Or, I guess, radio astronomy dishes, it could also be. These people should be very sick standing in that. But you can see, look at, look at how much of the field is useless and how little of it they can actually harvest out of. But that doesn't mean I am. And as we approach plain song you can hear the singing and the singing in the chorus and the song is very much ingrained part of their culture and one of the great things um, as you kind of start to, to scrape at and then dig deep at what like you see that that harvester there is coughing one of the great things about the way that the gorilla has done a job here is you have to do two things in the way that they build this world you have to build two worlds <coughs> You have to build the the current horizon world and you have to build the world of the old ones and make them interoperable make them compatible so it's two game worlds here it's you know it's one for sure but there's two histories and they could have gone in a very lazy way and made the the tribes very samey but the Nora and the Karj and the Osiram, the Utaru and, and the Tanakh as a whole, maybe not as three clans, but the Tanakh as a whole are very interesting. Let's go ahead and get around to this bridge. So trying to climb up their stone walls on the side. Not sure how clean this water is, but we're gonna have to walk through some of this red blight. And we are running so that we don't take too much damage. So here are the guards at the front of Plain Song as we walk up to find Zoe. And that is where I'm going to cut the recording for this episode and continue with what's going on in Plain Song in the next episode. So thanks for watching on YouTube and we'll continue on here on the lab side.